In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to organize your entire life. This is something that I have created a system for and I'm gonna walk you through step by step through that system so that you can feel like an actually organized person because I really used to be a disorganized person and this is the system that I created for myself and that I give to my clients too for how to really feel like someone who's actually organized and become the most organized person that you know. So I used to look up to people like Monica Geller from Friends or Jane Villanueva from Jane the Virgin, people who just seem to have their life together and now I feel like I'm one of those people, so I want to show you the process. Before we dive into the actual organizing, I recommend that you pick one place where you're going to keep your whole life organized. So you don't have what I used to do, which is keep like 10 lists on your phone and a piece of paper on the fridge and like notebooks and stuff around the house and some stuff on the computer and everything is kind of everywhere. I want you to pick just one place that you're going to keep everything. I recommend that you use Notion, which is an online software that's totally free to use. And I have created a template today for you. So I'm going to walk you through this step-by-step -step process. You don't have to use Notion, but you totally should because it's the best. So just click the link in the description and you will get my free Notion template as I walk you through step-by-step -step how to organize your entire life. Okay. One quick thing before we dive into the steps, in order for this process to work, you have got to decide that you are an organized person. You have got to believe that it is who you are, because if you don't, your thoughts are going to derail the entire thing. You can have the best systems in the entire world, but if you don't think like an organized person thinks, if you don't believe that you are someone who deserves to be organized, who wants to be organized, who values being organized, then you will not keep this system up and it will be a complete waste of your time. So decide right now, I am an organized person and start to think like an organized person. If you haven't already, click the link in the description to download the template. And then all you have to do is sign up for a free account and click duplicate so that you can make your own editable version of this document. Okay, let's dive into the actual steps. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you open the template. There are five different categories here and I'm gonna walk you through each of them. What I recommend you do is you grab them and drag them across to this little sidebar over here and that way you will have really easy access to them whenever you need to. So step number one, create a list of everything that's on your mind right now. You can do that inside the everything on your mind tab. So we're just going to literally make a list of all the things that your brain wants to do right now. Everything that it's thinking about in the short term, like got to clean the office or maybe you have to put on laundry or call your granddad or buy a present for Emily's birthday, finish a YouTube video. All of the things that your brain is thinking, we just want to dump them out onto the page because until you do this process, your brain will constantly be thinking about all the little things that it needs to be doing right now and it won't be focused on the actual actual creating process. So we want to make sure we just get all of it out onto the page right now. You can add more rows by clicking this button here and you can add as many as you like. Step number two is you're going to take all of the things that your brain wants to do and we're going to turn them into ideas for systems. You don't have to know exactly how they're going to work yet. You just want to come up with what do you want to have? So for example, when it says clean office, maybe what you want to have is an evening tidying routine. And maybe where it says put on laundry, you'd like to have a weekly cleaning routine. Maybe where it says call your granddad, you want to have a friends and family check-in. Maybe for buying a present for your friend Emily's birthday, you think it would be so great to just have a list of gift ideas. And maybe like a reminder for birthdays, like everyone's birthday in your life. Wouldn't it be so great if you just had that reminder constantly? So you just want to go through each of these to-do list items and think about what would be a system that you could create, even if you don't know how to create it yet, that would really alleviate the stress and that constant hamster wheel cycle of having those things in your brain. So you can come up with any kind of ideas of what you would like to have. So maybe for finishing your YouTube video, you want to have a content creation workflow. For getting a new client, you want to have a weekly sales routine where you make sales calls or sales emails. Maybe for booking flights, you want to have a travel planning document. Maybe for figuring out why your sales meeting didn't go as planned, you'd rather have a better consultation process. So it's always something you could easily review. Whatever it is for you, come up with the system. That is step number two. All right, it is time for step number three. 
What you're going to do now is you're going to take all of the systems that you want to create and you're going to put them into different categories. So we're going to start first with the personal categories. So what you're going to do is you're going to separate out each of your different systems that you want to have into the different categories of your life. These are the main categories that I have for my life. So I'm going to speed run you through all of these different sections so that you can get an idea of how to actually use this. But you can create any that you want. All you have to do at any point is just click this little plus icon and it will give you the option to create a page and then now you can start your own pages just like a word document or a google document okay so for example i have got a cleaning routine where i know exactly what i need to do even though it's just simply a list of things that way my brain doesn't have to hold it and it's not like oh my gosh i should be running the dishwasher or like what is that thing i was supposed to do oh yeah i wanted to clean the bathroom i just have it here and i know exactly when it's going to get done it's the same with a grocery list i now don't have to come up with that every time i go to the supermarket i can just have my grocery list right there for me to access. I've got recipes in there. I have got volunteering and the cont contributions that I'm making. I've got the giving that I want to do. So for example, I have some causes that really matter to me and I usually list them out here. And my goal is to give 1% of my income minimum to these organizations. So I just have like a list of everything. So I now even know like my plan for giving, I have like a system for giving, it's 1% and I have it in here. So I'm not ever confused and I'm not ever wondering what I'm supposed to be doing. It is all in here. And I'm gonna show you in a moment how I actually use all of this and utilize it. But for now, we're just getting all of the systems out. It's totally up to you how much you wanna plan. You might look at this and go, whoa, this is all way too much for me to plan. This is gonna make me so you know meticulous about everything. But I actually find that the more organized I am on paper or on digital documents, the less I have to think about it, the less I have to be that highly strung person because I'm like, oh yeah, it's just there. I just know exactly where to get it and what I'm going to do. And it feels so freeing rather than restrictive. So I've spent a long time building up these systems and you might want to build yours in the way that suits you. But I wanted to give you this template so that you don't have to start from scratch like I did. You've got a reading list in there and you can make notes in here as well if you want to keep specific reading list notes. We've got movies and TV to watch. I have a massive list of these on my personal one. I've got travel plans. So anytime I'm thinking about travel, I will create a potential travel idea and be, for example, I would love to go to Bali this year, something that I'm thinking about, but it's just an idea. So we're gonna put it on the idea plan. And I think I'd like to do it kind of maybe in May, I think would be a good time to go. So let's just say we're gonna go for a week um, in May. There we go. And I know I wanna go with my friend Georgia. She's really keen to go. <laughs> so already I can plan out what I'm gonna do. I've already visited LA this year. And within each of these things, they're also a document. So you can open it up and create a list, like a packing list in here. You could have all of the things you wanna do or like itineraries, whatever you wanna have can all go in here. And it's just all organized. Now I'm not thinking like, where did I put that information about Bali? I know exactly where it is. I've got a big packing list. I created this one. It's the actual one that I use. And so now whenever I'm about to go somewhere, I just check them all. And then as soon as I'm done, I uncheck them all and I just never have to think about what to pack. It's the easiest thing in the world to pack because I just look and I go and get the thing, put it in my suitcase. I also like to keep general information. So like my airpoints number, my storage container number, my home Wi-Fi password because I can never seem to find that otherwise. Now emergencies was something I really wanted to have a clear process for. So I wrote this list out for myself and I have checked all of them off. So I wanted to have three days of food per person in the house of emergency food, stuff that doesn't need to be cooked, stuff that doesn't need to be um, like any water added or anything. I just wanted to be able to like have it in like the worst of an emergency situation. And I actually ordered way too much somehow. We ended up ordering like enough for like 27 people for three days or something. So we're good, we've got enough. And I've linked there what I actually bought. Um, I've never tasted it though. So I can't recommend you on that. But also we have three days of water per person, I've got an emergency kit, a first aid kit, first aid certificate, escape plans, um, an AED location, it just means when it's one of those like things you put on people's chest, I forget what they're actually called, it maybe a defibrillator, is that what it's called? And you, you know, you see it on movies all the time. But I know where they are because they're really, like most people don't have one in their home, but I know that there's one in the building across from me and I know it's one in the building across from me there as well in case we needed it and self-defense. I took self-defense classes and I try to keep up to date on those as well. So 
whatever for you makes you feel safe in an emergency. Like we've got tsunami plans here, but you may not live in a location where a tsunami is. So you've got to put in for you whatever is relevant for you and how you want to organize your life. I also have digital decluttering. Highly recommend that you do this. Highly recommend you have a digital backup system like the iCloud or Google Drive or something that's automatically going to keep your photos or your stuff in case your actual hard drive just dies or something goes wrong. You want to have a password manager so you only have to remember one password ever again. I use LastPass and it's amazing. You want to ensure as many notifications are off as possible and you want to get to inbox zero. I have a whole video on how to get to inbox zero so highly recommend that you do that. I will link that video in the description if you want to see that. Under relationships I have my own guidelines. I've just put one of them in here because they're quite personal for me and my partner but we just made a list of all the guidelines that we want to have for our relationship. So in Instead of just thinking about, oh, well, that's a nice thing, we've actually got like almost a system or a, a list of things that we really believe make our relationship great. And anytime we want to, we review them and think about how we can strengthen our relationship even more. I created a network. Now, this is something that you're going to build up over time. It's not going to happen straight away. And I don't recommend you try to put everybody in your whole life into a network in one day. But over time, it's really great to have a list of the people that you know and how you know them so that if you're ever trying to connect somebody or ever maybe you're launching a book and you think like, how can I promote this? Or you want to help someone, you're thinking about how you can contribute more. You can go to this database and you've got a list of people, what their relationship is, how you know them and their email straight in there for you to easily access. Now, birthdays is a big one. This has been life changing for me. As soon as I decided I am going to remember people's birthdays and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to have them written in digital. I get an email for each of my friends' birthdays two weeks before, then one week before, and then on the day of their birthday. And I do that through this free website called Punchbowl that you can use. And I also use it for dentist appointments and doctor appointments. So I get an email two weeks before and then one week before and then on the day that I'm supposed to be you know booking another appointment for example for a checkup but I've kind of got a checklist here for what you want to do you want to make a list of everyone's birthday that you want to remember decide what you want to do that's actually doable like are you going to give a card are you going to send a text are you going to buy a present find out everyone's birthdays and put them into a digital system. Either you can use Punchbowl or you can put them into like even just your regular contacts list if you're an Apple user and they will automatically go onto your calendar. It's great. But whatever system that you choose to use, it doesn't really matter, just pick one. The whole idea of this isn't for you to be like, oh my gosh, there's all these things I need to do, but really over time to feel like, oh my gosh, there's all these things that I don't have to remember because it's all been organized and dealt with. I make a list of gift ideas. So specific things that people mention. So my friend Melissa mentioned that she wanted these droplet earrings and I actually got those for her. So anytime someone says something to me that they want, I just chuck it in here. I note it and I'm like, oh yeah. So I don't have to remember what it was that they wanted. And then I also have a list of just general ideas of things that I can do as gifts. You can come up with these. You can use chat GPT to come up with them. It doesn't really matter how you create them. The point is that you have a list. You know, when I was a teenager, I actually got broken up with. And in the breakup speech, he said to me, you know, aside from the reasons we're breaking up, you know, everything was good, except you're terrible at gift giving, which I was so like hurt by and couldn't believe it. So you can understand why now I'm like totally onto it with the gift giving because I have a little bit of, um, you know, stuff, some baggage around gift giving there. Now, the last piece in the personal section is finances. I highly recommend that you use Dave Ramsey's seven step plan and I have included it in here and a video to watch so he can teach you all about exactly how to do that. But you might also want to keep your insurance details and your will details in here too. So that's kind of part one of step three is to do your personal life. Then also if you're an entrepreneur, you want to do your business as well. So I've kind of got a funnel here. This is how I think about my business is in terms of these different steps. So we start off with traffic. So we're going to get people in. Then we move on to marketing and we think about how to actually market to those people. Then we've got sales. So when we're in an actual conversation with someone, then there's the delivery of the products and the services and actually looking after my customers. And then there's the processes I use to run behind the scenes and then managing everything. So if we look into these ads and organic, they're just blank pages because I like to just make a list of kind of what I'm working on. But then with my marketing, I have created a content dashboard. This you will love if you create content. So I split my content into long form, short form, and then email. And 
I have a schedule and you can write in whatever your schedule is. This is just a random one I made up. Like for example, one long form video weekly, two short form videos weekly, and two emails weekly. You might decide that's what you're going to create. Then under each of the types of content, I have the content that I'm working on. So this one's actually started because we're doing it right now so I can make it in progress how to organize your entire life. And in here, I will write out everything that I'm working on, right? So I had different title ideas. I had the shots that I wanted to get, right? Me talking um, to the camera, the screen itself that I'm recording now too, and the little notion pop-ups I wanna have. So I have the whole thing organized in here and I actually have it as a template. So when you click on new, then the template will load and you will also have this whole process that I use just in case it's one that you wanna to use too. Under meetings, this is how I tracked my consultations for years. I created a little consultation kind of sheet and I would have some questions in here that I wanted to ask them and I would track it like that. And then the status would be really, did they sign up or not sign up to my program? And then for the delivery, because I am a coach, I create a little client note section. So each client has their own notes in the, in the back end so that I can remember different things that I asked them or pieces of information that they told me. You can also create a list of services and products. For example, who your, what your product is, who it's for, what they get, how it's delivered. It's all just about taking the stress off your brain from thinking about it all and just having it written down. You can do an evaluation. For example, what's working, what isn't working, what do you want to do differently in your business? The processes. For example, you might have an onboarding process or a copywriting process that you use. There's a cash flow forecast that you can use, which I love. And basically, for example, let's say you get a customer, let's call them customer, let's call them customer three. And let's say we're in February and it's going to be, they're going to give you $5,000 it's going to update here and you're going to be able to see. And you can do this as a forecast. So you can guess and see what your outcome is actually going to look like in the long term. It shows you at the end here, if we only made as much as we've put in so far, it would be $16,000 total. So it's already in there for you to use. It's, I've already set up the system. All you have to do is input the numbers and you're going to be able to see your cash flow forecast. And then finally in here, I've got business costs. I find it really effective to just have a list of the things that I'm spending on so I can kind of keep track in my head of what I'm actually spending. Okay, so that is step three. You wanna take all of the different systems and put them into the different categories of your life. This is gonna take time. This is not something that's just gonna happen overnight, but that's okay. Now you've got all of these systems. How do you actually use them? Step four is to do the reset. And this is the most important part of the process. Really, if you do not do this, none of it even matters. You want to have a daily and a weekly reset. I find this extremely helpful. So let's start with the daily reset. You want to make sure that you put in whatever works for you. But for me, I like to review my calendar for tomorrow and then add or subtract any tasks that need to be done. I like to do a light tidy of the house, my workspace, the bedroom, the kitchen, I wipe it down. And then I evaluate the day for one minute. And that way I'm just never like forgetting about all of the systems that I created and I'm just constantly bringing myself back to them. So you can add in whatever you wanna do in your daily reset. Arguably even more important than the daily reset is the weekly reset. Because in the weekly reset, you're gonna completely come back to all of your systems and look through them. So for example, I review progress on all of my goals. How are my goals going? I review upcoming travel plans. I write a list of everything that needs doing. So I go back to that everything on my mind thing and I dump it all down. I make and confirm appointments. I put everything into my calendar. I review my finances. I use an app called Every Dollar, which was created by Dave Ramsey, and it is life-changing. I highly recommend you check that out. And then I do a digital clear out. And this is probably one of the best bits ever. I get to inbox zero. Every single week I make sure it's on Sundays I'm back to inbox zero. And I delete and I file everything in my downloads folder. And it is so nice. I just get such a rush from just deleting it all and starting fresh. It doesn't matter what you put in your weekly reset as long as it's actually resetting your life so that you're using these systems and coming back to them every single week. All right, that is how to organize your entire life. Step one, get everything out of your mind. Step two, think about the systems that you wanna create from those things. Step three, Put them into the different categories and actually create those systems. 
And step four, do a weekly and daily reset so that you're constantly coming back to those systems. I live in this Notion document. I really do constantly come back to it all the time, every single day I'm in there. And it just allows me to not use my brain as a memory stick and actually use my brain as a processor because our brains are extremely powerful. And if you use them to just hold all of this information, of course you're gonna feel stressed and overwhelmed. But as soon as you get it all organized and all sorted, then you can just simply be the one to do the actions in the process rather than constantly having to hold in the back of your brain, wasn't there something I was supposed to be doing? If you haven't already, make sure you download the Notion template. And if you've got questions, let me know in the comments because I would love to know. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I will talk to you in the next video.